said, I think we're going to get started on our presentation right now. So why use Google Calendar? Um, on the next slide, I'm going to talk about a little bit of the benefits that we found helpful. And yeah. So for starters, it helps you stay organized, which would help you for a future job. Um, organization doesn't just stop in college. Obviously, like when you have a job, you're going to take on a lot more responsibility. So it's really good to get started right now. You're also able to connect various calendars. And let's we'll talk more about this later. But for example, if you're in different organizations, different events, or you have different emails, you could all add these separate calendars onto your Google Calendar and hide them when you want them. And another benefit about Google Calendar as opposed to like a physical agenda is that you can pull it up whenever you are, like wherever you are. It could be on your phone, your computer, your tablet. Personally, I do both. I write stuff and I have Google Calendar because I really like the accessibility of it. Also, it allows users to categorize their events. So for example, you can change it between your reminders, your tasks, your events. I even put one, I have to put like my, pay my credit card on there. Like I really use it for everything. And also it could be very visually aesthetic. And for some people having something that looks pretty will keep you motivated. And lastly, you could see your, all, all your obligations in one place. Obviously that's if you decide to log it all in, which I feel like is really helpful. So I know how much I'm doing in one day versus how much free time I have. All right, and now we're going to get into our live introduction portion, and we are going to start off by showing you all how to add an event. Okay, so it's demo time. So Catherine has Google Calendar open, and she's going to click the plus create button to add an event to her calendar. And she's going to click event for now, yeah. Um, and then you can add the title of the event, the date and the time, and a description if you need to. And just a heads up, always remember to press save. It's in the bottom right corner, otherwise the event's gone. It's not gonna be on your calendar. Um, and then another interesting thing to do when adding an event to your Google Calendar is to select the event type. So as you see, there's all those different ones, event, focus time, out of office, task reminder, appointment schedule, et cetera. And that can just help you to organize the kind of things that you are putting onto your calendar. Okay, and now another thing that I love doing when adding events is adding guests to my events. So say Catherine is coordinating with Hydea and I to do our Google Calendar event, she can add us and we will get an email invitation to this event and it can be put onto our own calendars. And next, um, another great thing to do is add conferencing or a physical room. So first you can add video conferencing. I love doing that for Zooms, it's super easy because then you can just do everything in one place. You don't have to, <laughs> you don't have to like go onto your Zoom app and set up a Zoom, you can just do it all on Google Calendar. Um, however, if you're not having a Zoom event and it's in a physical place, you can just click a room or a location. All of the Santa Clara ones are in there. Um, things like that. <laughs> so it's helpful, like if you're putting your classes into your calendar, you can put like Lucas or Kenna, wherever your classes are located. And just kind of like a disclaimer, the Zoom, like adding a Zoom video conference is like an add-on, but you just go to the like little Google App Store thing and download it. It's super easy. All right, and then getting on to the next few parts of adding an event, you can do a private or public setting on your calendar event. So Catherine clicked on her name and it shows the little thing that says default visibility. And so default visibility, it's shown to like everyone who has access to your calendar, but if you make the event private, um, people who have access to your calendar will not see that event. And that's super nice if you're just like uncomfortable having people know that you have like a doctor's appointment or something like that. Um, and now for the reminders and notifications, if you see the little notification bell and it says 10 minutes before, you can adjust when you would like to be notified for your events. And then if you click custom, you can do it like hours, days, weeks in advance, however many is helpful to you. I like to do 10 minutes before. I used to do 30, but you know, it's just everyone's individual preferences. All right, so, um, sorry, Caroline, were you recording? Just wanted to double check. 
Yeah, okay, sorry, I couldn't see it. Um, so I'm just gonna talk to you about the color options because one thing about Google Calendar that I love is that you can make it very visually appealing as you can see, let me just finish this up. As you can see, mine is very colorful and to some of y'all that might seem overwhelming, but for me, it's a schedule that really works for me. So um, yeah, and then you could also make custom colors, which I did not know because I normally use it on my phone and on my phone, like you only have like a preset of, I wanna say like 12 colors-ish, but a way to get more colors is if you go to the left-hand side on your name or any of like your calendars, you can see there's way more here. And on top of that, if you click the plus, it's just like Instagram and everything where you could like choose a hue, choose what kind of shade you want it and you could even make it like personalized. So that is also really helpful. And then a pro tip that I would say is that we'll show you how to link Camino to your Google Calendar so you can see all your assignments and classes as well. But on your Camino, there is like a color associated with a course. I would recommend to like match that same color on your Google Calendar. So that's why. So mentally, you can know that everything green, for example, would be your CTW. So when you see green on your Google Calendar, it, you're like your mind will understand that that's how it correlates with each other. Let's see. Yeah. All right. So then I just wanted to show y'all how it looks on my iPhone, because like I said, I do use it a lot on my phone because I don't always have my computer everywhere. So as you can see on the left hand side, I know it's kind of small, but again, it's the same colors that I have on the right hand side, except the left hand side is on the month view, whereas my computer one is on the week view. So I did want to share to you um, what like my colors mean so you understand maybe how to organize them. I have a second job besides being an orientation leader. So all of my shifts, for example, are in this like light purple. So I kind of know that that's when I have to work. Um, and then anything, anytime I have a Bronco exchange event, I make it in red because I know that that's not optional and I need to be there no matter what. Anytime like I have a meeting or a Zoom event, anything important, I would make that in yellow. And then I do kind of like move a lot in the sense that like I go to family or I go home or I stay at the residence halls in Santa Clara. So my location or anything personal, I would put in pink because that's like my personal mail for my calendar. And we'll get into like the calendars more later and like how you want to separate them if you choose to do that. And yeah, just one more thing. There's also different views um, for your phone uh, for your calendar on your phone for example you can see like your day which would just be like one column you can see three days at a time a week and month and these options are also available on the computer Perfect. Now moving on to multiple calendars or creating new calendars, as we see on kind of the left side of um, Catherine's Google Calendar page, it says my calendar. So we see her, the one that's in yellow at the top is with her name. That's like her personal calendar. And the one under that is like her Barcada board calendar. So that's one of the MCC clubs here on campus. And so if you have like multiple calendars, such as classes or orientation, sometimes you want to organize those calendars and put specific events depending on which calendar it's in. So to do that, Catherine will go to other calendars and go to the plus, and then you see create new calendar. So say she wanted to make a calendar for um, another specific thing. Let's say a third job. Let's say she's getting a third job. So she wants <laughs> her third job calendar. <laughs> so once you press that create calendar and it says successfully created, she can go back and you see that that third calendar pops up under the my calendar section. So now, and she can also edit the colors as she would like. So um, another cool thing which you can do is, well, the, let's show the first thing of like, you can also share your calendar with people. So you can go to the three dots, go to settings and sharing, and you're going to scroll down and see Catherine's screen already says it share with specific people. So say if me, Catherine and Caroline are all working at the same job and we have all the exact same shifts, Catherine can share her calendar with us. So we're able to see that calendar and it will pop up on our calendars as well on our own personal um, Google calendars, which is a really, really cool feature. Then if Catherine wants to um, go to her calendar and say, as I was saying, mentioned a little earlier, another thing is that you can put events under specific calendars. So if Catherine goes and creates the event, like we all just went through, and she clicks on her name. Now she can put that third job. We see that right there. So now it's under her third job calendar. She can put shift.
And then it pops up there in a really cool thing. All the little colors you see, like birthdays and classes and orientation 2022 is all unclicked. So with a cool feature of Google Calendar, you can choose which calendars you want to show. So if she didn't want to see her third job shift, maybe it's optional, maybe it's like a optional meeting, she can unclick and click her calendar. So see now when she unclicks it, it's not there anymore. But when she clicks it again, then it would pop up again. And so you can edit your calendars depending on what views. And so for instance, like classes, since it's summer and Catherine doesn't have any summer classes, those are unclicked currently, but come the fall, that box will be clicked because now she has class reminders on her Google Calendar. And so the next, some of some really cool tips and tricks that you can do is finding availability of other people. Now that might sound a little weird y'all, but use it in good faith, I tell you. So for instance, say if Catherine wants to create an event again with me and Caroline and say, we're all very busy. We have very different schedules. So we, we need to find a time. So what Catherine will do, we'll add guests like um, Caroline taught us. And then right there, it says suggested times under our name. So right there, you can see the time in which we are all available and Catherine can propose a meeting in which we can meet. So we see the next time that we're all available at the same time is July 21st, which is today at 4 p.m. So that way, Catherine doesn't have to text us or something or send out a Google Calendar invite and say, hey, can we meet actually at 1 p.m.? Because obviously either I'm not available, Caroline's not available, or the both of us aren't available. So that's a nice feature if you're getting other people together and you need to find a time which should work for everyone. And granted, some people might not put every single thing on their Google Calendar, so it might not always be foolproof, but it is a good way to have those suggested times and you know really eliminate that hassle of trying to find a date and time that works for everyone. Another cool little shortcut um, feature is that you can use keyboard shortcuts to change your different views. So right now we see that Catherine is in her week view. So if Catherine clicks, let's say D on her keyboard. No worries, no worries. <laughs> now she sees the day view. And then if she clicks M on her keyboard, now she sees the month view. So of course, this is just a little trick. And of course, you do have that drop down menu and it does tell you the little keyboard um, shortcuts that you can use. So you can always change your view that way. But if you're trying to get something like really quick, if someone's saying, um, what's your ability availability this week, you can go ahead and click W really quick, or you can go to that drop down menu and then you're able to see that full week. So just a quick little you know, calendar view shortcuts for you all. Oops, I was muted. I started talking, but now this I think is a really important skill to have is linking Camino. I'm just going to give Catherine one second to get Camino up because it can be um, a little bit confusing because we're screen sharing and doing split screen. But so just if any of you don't know, Camino is the online platform where we have like your courses are there and there's a calendar with like your course schedules and things like that. Um, and also just where a lot of teachers do like class related postings. So yeah, Catherine's going to Camino. She's on her SU portal. And we're just- Give it a second to load. I think I shocked my computer. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We're almost there. All right. So on the side, on the left side, we've got all those icons and Catherine's going to click on calendar. And that's usually where you, yeah, that's where you can see the whole calendar view. Obviously there's nothing on there because it is summer and she's not enrolled in any classes. And then on the right side, there is the calendar feed option and Catherine's going to go ahead and click on that. And then you get a link and you get a link to the calendar. So if you go ahead and copy and paste that. And then Catherine could just type like Google. Oh, we're going to have to get back to Google Calendar. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> um, so yeah, now Catherine's going to add a new calendar with that link. So click plus and then from URL. Second to last option. And then Catherine's going to paste that URL into there. 
and add calendar. And then that adds her Camino calendar to her Google calendar. So they're automatically synced, which is really nice. And now she can change the color, do whatever she wants, but it's there and she's got her courses, assignments and such in her Google calendar, which is nice because then you don't have to go back and forth checking Camino and checking Google calendar and like, yeah, it saves time. Well, perfect. So now we're going to go ahead and jump into our Q&A. So really, this is y'all's time to really ask us any questions about Google Calendar. And we're also here to answer any questions y'all may have about SCU in general. So yeah, the time is yours. And also, if you did want me to like go over a demo real quick without like the screen share, Feel free to ask again because I know it might have looked a bit confusing, but <laughs> you all are going to get access to the slides as well. So you got the live demo and you'll also get the slides. Yeah. So anything that you want to know, we're here to answer. <laughs> 